Welcome, 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 welcome to my channel. Patrice T. Evans here. And today, what you are watching right now is my show, Patrice T. Evans, Joy Show, Joy Party TV, J O Y, because Jesus overcame for you. That's something that the Lord put in my heart to coin. And we're just so excited to be able to show you how to bring joy into your life. Um, I apologize if there's something going on in and out somehow about that this time of day on Sundays, I tend to see that. So I hope you're doing fine with your connections. And um, so, what uh, the latest news is that I uh, finally published my book. It is uh, Resilient Joy, which is a real blessing that I have. And it's because I've overcome so much um, abuse and gaslighting. It's a wonderful book. I hope you look. It's available now on Amazon. So definitely get yours, Resilient Joy. And people are reading it, enjoying it. It is uh, give or take 30, 300 and 50 pages, so definitely takes to get some tea, but it's an easy read, it's very engaging, and it's my whole life in there, broken down into four parts, as though they're four movies, because <laughs> I've always felt that way, you know? So I hope you enjoy it. Um, we will be talking more about it in the months to come as people have had a chance to read it. Um, I'll be letting you know more about uh, getting the interest groups or getting some kind of launch party or something where we can come together to, and talk about the next steps of what's going with that. It's already in the back of the book, so I might as well just let y'all know now is that there is a, a, a series. Uh, a, we're working on a TV series that has to do with the book, and it's really exciting. So I want to talk about all that stuff. If you're interested in that, definitely email me, patriciaevans1 at gmail.com. If you are, hey, Catherine, if you are like Catherine, my co-host, who is regular, really supporting, and you've read the book, or you're part of my ministry, and you want to be a part of our launch party and our gathering where we're going to be talking more about this and what's coming with it, the TV show series that's coming out of it, um, where it, you're going to be starting pre-production. And it's, I'm really excited. Stay prayerful on that and definitely get the book, get read it, finish that. So by within another, um, hopefully before Christmas, we can get together and we can talk more about the future of the next steps of what you thought of the book, of what you, what, how more, how else can I bless you moving forward with our next steps. So I'm really excited about all the things that are coming out of, of what God's doing at the end of this year. This has been a full year for me. I don't know about you, but today in church, I was just like saying to the Lord, wow, I made it through this year. We all are alive who are alive. We're alive. You know, not everybody made it. May they all rest in peace. May God bless their souls. And I hope many of them came to Christ. But many of us who are alive, those of us who are alive, we have to also thank God that at the end of 2021, we're still here and we're able to uh, be a blessing and we're alive for a reason. Today, I felt like the Lord was like, you know, we made it. So make it count. Make your life count. There's God could have taken you too, but he didn't do it. Even those who have died from different things, we made it. We're at the end of 2021 and we're still here. Make your life count. Make sure that even if you are not the one leading something, everyone's leading something. You're leading yourself or you're leading people around you, right? People are always watching you and wanting to see what you're doing because you are leading. But you can follow you know, someone who's doing something like what I'm doing, you could be a part of that and you could be a leader in your group by being a part of something else. So let's just make it count, make our lives count. As an evangelist, that's what I am. I'm sharing the gospel. So if you're a part of this ministry, you will be helping to share the gospel. At the very core of what we do is sharing the gospel, making sure that those who are unsaved come to Christ and those who are saved are growing in that and they're able to keep the focus, the main thing, which is sharing the gospel in their lives as well, so that they can continue to share it. They can grow together. And then when we get there, as we had um, at my church, we had Montel Williams uh, as a, um, a guest uh, pastor today. Uh, this is how you do it. This is how we do it. He was preaching today. He was amazing. I just thought like, what a kindred spirit and everything he was saying. I was just like, whoa. And he talked about the stuff we talk about here, being in the kingdom. Once you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the next step is to know who you are now. You've crossed over. You're not in the world. You're in God's world. You're in his kingdom. So now it's time for you to live how the kingdom works. He is the king. There is no democracy. And you surrender to everything he says. And you find your place in the kingdom and do your part. Make it count. So he talked about the kingdom. He talked about similar things that we do. You know, when the Holy Spirit is speaking, it's not like the world. The world calls it copying or whatever. But no, if I don't know you and I don't even know what you were about to say, you didn't even know what I said last week and you're in church and you're saying the same thing. That's because the same Holy Spirit that's in me is in you. God is speaking. God is speaking. If you've ever wondered why you would be talking about something, you get to church and the pastor's preaching about it. That's because the Holy Spirit's really speaking to you. And he's trying to show you that 
He's in all of us. And it's like a wave of what he's saying the same thing to us all. And then you go out there. I know you know what I'm talking about, Catherine. Um, and then you go out there, you'll turn on something and you'll be like, whoa, she's saying exactly what the Lord told me because the same Holy Spirit. So it's not in our kingdom and in our, in our economy, it's not the same as the world. It's not about copying or you're mad that they said the same thing. It's because it's not you anyway. It didn't come from you. It came from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sending out a wave of some kind of message that we're all getting. So the same message, which is something I've been like such a, it's a thing for me, is that we just said it last weekend. It's not about our culture and what our culture is okay with. It's not about in the Israelites here in, in, in the time of Isaiah. It's not what the culture around them is doing. It's what God told them to do and what's in their kingdom and what's in the um, the line of what they promised God, right? They have to stay within that no matter who they're around, no matter what time times are going on, like what times uh, that they're in. Like we're in the times where there's, a, you know, maybe a trend would be to say certain things and to act a certain way. But when we're in this kingdom, we cannot do that. We can, we have to stay within what the kingdom is and what God allows. And God's a cool, fun God. He allows a lot. You can dance, you can have a glass of wine, you can have fun, you can enjoy yourself. There's just some things that will grieve the Holy Spirit and hurt other people or yourself that we cannot do. It does not matter when you are living in the world, what time frame you're living in. You still can't be a part of the world. And if you are, you are apart from him, is what that message was today. You are apart from him and you are now like his enemy. You are... Um, it's like he can't see you. He's just, he's perfect. You want to be a part of it. You have to do what he says and be a part of the kingdom in your lifestyle and the way you walk and talk and the way you live. Then he can welcome you and he can be in you and around you and you'll hear him. But when you are adverse to him, he won't be able to be a part of your world. Amen. So it doesn't matter what culture you are. If there's cursing in your culture, if there's gaslighting in your culture, and that's just the way it is. It doesn't matter. You can't do it because you're a part of a different culture. The kingdom of God it doesn't not color. It's not sex. It's not any of that status. It's the kingdom of God. Jesus is the king. There's no democracy. So here in Isaiah's time, he's saying the same thing. Today, we're hearing the same thing. We just got to, it's, it's almost as though we, that's our biggest problem as human beings. We have a hard time letting go of this world just because we're in it, we're not of it. And we want to be a part of it, but it's, we're not. We're set apart the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, which I can say that prayer with you at the end of this, if you'd like to join the family of Christ. The moment you do that, now you're part of the kingdom. Now you don't get to say what you do. You don't get to have your own thing. He even talked about today, your body is in your own. This is what we've been talking about. It's not your own. You don't get to be a part of the trends of this world. You stay in this kingdom, live in this kingdom, and you do things, excuse me, the way that this kingdom works. All right? And since Jesus overcame for you, then he paid the price for you. So now you don't belong to yourself. So your body, your mind, your spirit, your life, your decisions you make, everything goes to him first. So this is the same spirit of what was preached today. And I'm just so, it was just such a, I needed that. I need to hear that I, we're not the only one saying it. I need to hear that, like, is anybody else realizing that we can't just do what this world is doing? We don't say the same stuff. We don't do the same political stuff. We don't do the trends. We don't say things like that. We talk like we're part of this kingdom. So I was so grateful for Montel. Williams, and, and I'm going to learn more about him and follow him more. And God bless him. That was wonderful. I appreciated that so much. So anyway, y'all, um, what we're doing here in, in, um, on, on our channel today is I wanted to read chapter 24. And I don't know if there was something else I wanted to say in line with that for myself. I feel like the only thing I can say about that for myself in terms of what the Spirit is showing me right now is that we have to be careful. He's been talking to me about stumbling blocks. He's been talking to me about how I can be, I have been a stumbling block to people because they misunderstand things and they, they make a mistake and they disrespect me or they do something wrong. And then they're hurt. They're hurt. They'd be judged. Uh, we're talking about judgment. God judges. So God has been showing me about stumbling blocks. He's been showing me about in times, things like that stumbling blocks. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And he's talking, he, he's revealing to me with when, in reading this about how the in times, um, the bottom's going to be on the top and the top on the bottom. I'm seeing a lot of that. I'm seeing a lot of when you go through this life the way the world is and not like the kingdom, like we said before, there you're blinded by a lot when you're not living in the kingdom's way. And when you're blinded, especially during these last days, you can fall for a lot of things that are really not what they seem. And they're actually bringing you into a path that's going to be destructive. 
And so that's what happened with them, these, the Israelites in um, Isaiah during this time too. They went by what they saw and they believed what they saw and they acted on it. They let themselves have fear, everything like the world. They, uh, they made themselves, they took their king's kingship of being a part of the one and true living God and how God blessed them. And they lowered themselves to be like the worlds around them, the people around them and disrespected God in doing so because they knew God can do things for them. But when they were in trouble, like we just read last week with all the different groups around them, they went and ran and called out for Egyptians. We would get to get help from these people and these people, the Assyrians and this, and it was almost like a disrespect to God because God has shown them that he can bring them manna every day, that he can bring them across the, the sea and, 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 and um, divide the waters for them, that he can do all these things and give them the promised land. He did all that. And then when they get there, they go to neighboring countries in order to fight their battles. They uh, join in, the northern part of Israel joins in with um, the pagan beliefs and the women and all the things that were going on at the time. I say women because the Bible talks about them, the man, but commingling and all that, the men choose the women. So they chose the women of the other groups around them, the pagan groups. They bowed down to their pagan gods. They did the world stuff. It's that kingdom versus the world. They were a part of the one and true living God, part of that kingdom. And then promising that they believed in the Messiah that was gonna come, just like we believed in the Messiah that has been. So they were in it, just like us, no different from us in that sense. But even though they were calling themselves that and they were doing the rituals, empty rituals, they weren't believing in their heart. It was here, but it wasn't here. So many people call themselves Christians, but it's not here. They're fearful in these end times of, of, of the pestilence and what I call the pandemic of pestilence um, and the judgments and all the judgment going on in the world right now. We're getting little labor pains of judgment. I hope you're following me. And um, but we, even during these end times with all the craziness that's going on, we have to remember who we are. You still have to do things like the kingdom. You still don't go around cursing and, and being nasty and rude. I don't care if you're, it's in your culture, the African-American culture. We're not going to get away with it just because, why? Because that's how we do things. And No. Well, then you're not a part of it. You have to pick, choose today who you will serve. Are you a part of the African-American culture or are you a part of the culture of the kingdom? You know? Which culture are you going to be a part of then? Because we have a culture already in our kingdom. That comes first. And then it just so happens that you were born into that culture that will shine through when you're talking about the Lord. I'm going to do things like a black woman would do it because I'm in, born into that culture. But I'm going to govern my mind and my heart the way God wants me to do it, if that makes any sense, the Holy Spirit speaking. So back then, Israelites were supposed to do that. They weren't like the rest of the people. They were supposed to govern themselves the way God told them, that God directly told them how to eat, how to do everything. They disobeyed. God told them to wait. God told them to do, they disobeyed. They had pride. They wanted to, they, they were um, oppressive to one another. They were doing something. We're going to read about all the things that they were in chapter 24. And you've already read it, but we're going to, it's, it's repeating. God's repeating and he keeps on weaving it back in. And there is judgment is what I don't think people want to hear today and what we're not hearing and no preaching. There's judgment when that happens. But last week we talked about how God judged even the other countries around, but he also gave room for reparation and for us to be to resolve. So God's having me just go straight into this. We will get up and move, but I want to just get that in your mind that in these last days, there's so much going on right now. But what God's bringing to me is the stumbling blocks. Be careful with stumbling blocks and know that what you're seeing out there in the world when people look like they're making it and everything's going great and you think you want that, be careful for that being a stumbling block and also be careful with the ones that you don't want to be like. The ones that are like me, the, the people who are speaking truth in the wilderness, they're trying to tell you the truth, but because they're not doing the things that the world's doing, you're not as interested in hearing that. I could be a stumbling block because you overlook, because you look down on them, because you, you curse the fact that they're being honest about something. That's a stumbling block. You will be judged for that. These are in times. So be careful. Don't go by what you see. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. What God's showing me is stumbling block. That's kind of the whole thing with my whole ministry. And, and when you, you don't, yes, judge a book by its cover, but be careful when you're not being led by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is leading me that you cannot be have a stumbling block with what's going on today, meaning the lies, the deception, and the flip of the truth that's in our kingdom. If you're walking in the Spirit, which we've always talked about, if you're praying day to day, minute by minute of everything that you're doing, 
doing, God will reveal the truth about people, about societies, about politics, about anything. You will not fall and have stumbling blocks in these last days if you have your eyes open because the Holy Spirit's guiding you and you are surrendering to it. Unlike others who aren't, this is what happens when you're not listening. They didn't have the Holy Spirit like we do now because he came in the, in, in the day of Pentecost, but they did have an anointing of the Lord. They had a favor of the Lord. They had God right there with them, showing them, guiding them. They were supposed to come to the Lord. God showed them precepts of how to stay before him. They had the temple. They had ways of connecting and listening to the Lord. They were not doing it. And we're reading about what happens. God's saying yesterday, today, and forever. He will do the same, and he is doing the same today. We are being judged today. When you see states and countries going through so much. Okay, I understand. I understand. Okay, she's going in and out because she's traveling. That's okay. That's okay. Well, we'll see you then. Thanks for letting me know. So our co-host, Catherine, she's having a problem staying because going in and out for her because she's traveling. So that's fine. That's fine. But thank you so much. I love you. Keep me in prayer. Keep our ministry in prayer. All right. Well, so this chapter is, and why I believe the Lord's leading me to read Isaiah, it's I mean, every time I read it, I'm like, that's today. That's exactly what we're dealing with today. So I want you to get your mind ready and your hearts ready and prepared to hear about this stumbling block that that um, I believe the Lord is putting before me that I don't want for you. If you're white, black, Spanish, doesn't matter. Be careful looking at this world and people and politics and all the things in the way that it's been handed to you on a platter. Don't trust it. Don't trust it. It's not true. It's not what it seems. Pray about it and use pray for wisdom to be able to see deeper than what you see. You must see deeper than what you see. Because if you go deeper than what you see, you're going to see the truth and you'll know what to do with it. It won't be a stumbling block. When I say a stumbling block, it's going to bring sin and you will be judged. That's what I mean. So if you're if you hear something from me that triggers something political that makes you upset and you now either curse me or you do something. I'm a child of God. I'm anointed. What the Bible says that, you know, some things that happen to you, if you do things like that, that's a stumbling block because you are misled by the devil, the lie of the veil of the devil. And you're not, you, you don't have to take it, but you definitely don't want to curse it. Amen. And if you go to the thing that's demonic, that could be something that can harm you too. So these end times are very tricky. Read Matthew, Find out what to look for and stay on your knees and be honest with yourself and let the Lord ask the Lord to reveal truth. And when I read this chapter, I want you to find yourself in it or not you in particular. When I say yourself, I mean us today, all of us today in these last days. Where are we in this? Not you in particular, but all of us. Where is our society in this? Are we doing the same things? You know what I'm saying? So I want you, I'm going to get my cue up my, my music. I want you to start to read this and see where we fit in all of this, okay? Let me just quickly, let me get some music and let my son know that my my cat's like a man. He like knocks on the door. There. So... Yeah, so keep that in mind as we move forward. I'm glad I got, that's probably why God wanted me to get that message out right away so that um, she can hear it. She got the message. So um, the Lord is just, just keep that, pray about what God means by stumbling block. That's what he keeps showing me, saying that I am, people like me are, truth speakers, truth seekers, people who are being honest. Um, Isaiah is a stumbling block. He's preaching truth and people are not listening to that. And then they're failing and falling and all the people around them, um, all the countries around are even being uh, judged. Before you get judgment, you could look like everything's great and looks like nothing is ever going to happen to you. That's how we looked in the beginning of 2020. That means nothing. Don't go by that. Go by the truth. Try to see the future. Ask God. Just say, Lord, where is this going to lead me? Where is this going to lead my family? If I, What's the truth about this? Am I believing propaganda about Black people? Am I believing propaganda about white people? Am I really believing propaganda about this issue or that issue? And I should be looking a little deeper at that and not letting that 
sway assuage me to do things that I will displease you, Lord. Choose today who you will serve. If you do something with a group, a political group or a cause, and it goes against the kingdom, you've chosen that over the kingdom and you will be judged just like Israel. That's the point. Just like Israel, you will be judged just like Israel. And I think we just, we think we're just picking political things and we're having fun and, not, and God, God doesn't care about that stuff. No, that's what they did. That's what they did. They picked things that were worldly, that was a part of the enemy's kingdom, part of the Babylonian kingdom, part of the darkness that's going on around us. Just because it sounds good. They made a good thing. They, they like black people. They like women. It's woke, whatever the case is. Or because you are believing that the South has been through so much after slavery that it's our culture that we're fighting for. And da, 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 whatever the case is, if you talk about racial, I keep forgetting the phrase, um, um, a race, racial, I keep forgetting the phrase, I'll put it in the description, but probably shouldn't say it anyway because of the uh, of YouTube. But, you know, we don't, we don't want to teach about what's happened in America in the past with slavery and racism and, and um, all that stuff like that. We don't want to talk about that. We don't teach that to the kids because, so it's almost like propaganda around it now. The truth, you don't want to tell the truth about the country. How are you going to grow if you don't know the truth? You know? So now you've created a propaganda around that truth to make it look like you're this kind of person if you talk about that stuff. That's gaslighting. Racism, by the way, is gaslighting. And our abuser are slave owners and people who are enslaving people and oppressing them. Those are our abusers and they, we're their supply. And they're so obsessed with having us that they won't let us go and they're never gonna stop. And they're lying about how powerful and strong we are as African-American people. And they're lying about any group that is uh, because of their insecurity. And it's just this relationship of an abuser and the person being abused. They'll never let the woman leave because they need her as supply. That's all this is. And they're never gonna change because narcissists don't change. So we're never gonna have these people change their minds. We can pray for the Lord to do a miracle on their hearts, but as a group, they're always gonna be somebody, right? So it's a sad thing that our country's like that. Our country can actually change if we all don't don't tolerate it. If we don't tolerate it, white, black, or whatever, and we stop it, we stomp it out, then sure it'll go away. But it's a sickness and it's it's a demonic uh sickness. And that's what's going on here. Oppression. That's a that's abuser abusing group people. God's not for that. And then once they get out of your hand, you do a smear campaign and say that they're dirty so they can't go in the pool. Think about it. And you gaslight. And, and you put them on TV and act like they're 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 all this they're, um steal they steal and they they do everything bad and that's systemic. You create a systemic thing to make them think that they're crazy and that they're whatever. That's that's all gaslighting. So black people have gotten the worst gaslighting ever in this country. So we know what that is, and it's it's really it's a group. It's it's a group gaslighting is tribal. It's systemic. It's really awful. So to not talk about it and teach the kids, you don't even have to. We see it in the movies. This is just kind of like a, it's, it's the, the wonderful, the biggest thing that an abuser does is they try to tell you that what you're seeing obviously with your own eyes isn't true. How could you tell people not to teach it in school when they can see it in all the movies? Well, you can see it just last year. So you don't have to not say it in school. We all know it. So, you know, narcissistic people are sometimes embarrassingly gaslighting. They're embarrassingly abusing because it's like obvious what the truth is, but they try to pretend it's not. And that's what they've done with a lot of things. So the world's a hot mess. They're lying left and right, either side, going too far with stuff. Nobody knows what they're talking about. And, you know, don't pick a side because it's going to be a stumbling block. Don't even go anywhere. Listen to me talk. Can you tell us I? I'm speaking truth and righteousness. It doesn't matter what side I'm on. I don't need a term to tell me what side I'm on. You know, I'm on the side of justice and on, on God's just um, good truth and righteousness. And he's against oppression. So yeah, I'm on that side. Amen. And so, you know, you can put a label on anything I say, but it doesn't matter. I'm on the side of, of righteousness, truth and righteousness, and on love and not oppressing anyone. And there, God has no respect of persons. And the kingdom has come before my color. But at the same time, I'm not okay with oppressing my people. And neither is God. And God was not okay with Israel oppressing their own people. And that's why they were judged. So pull out of these isms of these end times and don't let yourself fall into traps of them because just because I believe that doesn't mean I'm going to follow behind a cause because if they start to add other, latch other things to that cause, I got to be behind that too. And those things are not a part of my kingdom. 
Maybe some of those things are, but not all of those things. And so I don't go behind the cause. I go behind God's cause, which will fit all of the causes that have to do with oppressing. Just go in God's cause. It'll cover it all. I mean, I sound like them 100%, but I sound like any group that is standing for truth and righteousness and that is against oppression. Amen? I am I am 100% behind it because my father in heaven is, and he grieves him. And let me just give black people a, some, some, something to go by here. Don't be, a, don't worry. He is judging them. Every racist white person or black person or any group, because there are lots of groups that are racist, um, they taught them in America when the immigrants came in. They taught them to do the same things. So it's, it's not just one, do the right thing, watch the movie. It's not one group. It's been taught through all the groups. A lot of immigrants come in here that way and they cheat. If you go live in New York like I did, we get it from people from other countries. I didn't get it from white people. I got it from, so I never got it straight from them. I got it from the other immigrants because they te- they learn it. In order to get into the status, they have to treat us a certain way. You know, I'm from back in the day. I know this whole story. So God's against it. It doesn't matter. And, you know, the gaslighting lie is that they're getting away with it. The gaslighting lie is that this is okay. That's the stumbling block, is that you think you're getting away with treating me poorly or anybody. God says, blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. He didn't say blessed are the ones that are on top all the time. He said at the end, the bottom will be the top. The top will be on the bottom. I'm seeing it. And I'm trying to warn you, don't let these people that look like they're on the bottom be a stumbling block to you because you will be judged. The labor pains are here. All those people that are sound loud and they want to come behind somebody who is about oppression, racism, separating, fraction, and all that kind of stuff, they're being judged by the Lord. People are dying for the wrong, for poor, because they're being selfish and they're being uh, stubborn. People are being taken, their jobs are being taken away. Their businesses are being taken away. Things are happening to people and they're not covered by the blood of Jesus. And all things don't work together for good for them because they don't love the Lord. God said, if you don't love this right, who's right in front of you, then you can't love me. If they don't love me looking like I do, looking like I do, don't let me be a stumbling block because if you can't love me and respect me, there's no way. He says, if you can't love the one that you can see, how could you love someone you don't? He says, it's because you've, le- you've blessed one of my, the, my children. That's why I bless you. Don't let it be a stumbling block to you that you make the mistake and you go as a white person to a black person and allow yourself to fall into some trap by being racist, disrespectful, oppressive, saying some things out of your mouth is what comes out of the mouth that defiles them that are so against the Lord and have the audacity to call yourself a Christian. That's a blasphemy. You're better off if you stop adding the Christian to that, then you'll fall less because I'm here as a warning. A lot of evangelists, I'm an evangelist. Evangelists usually are the warning right before destruction. That's our job. It's not a fun job. We step in and we give a warning like Isaiah right before something's about to happen. It's like an urgent warning. And I am doing that right now. We are in end times. And with, with, it doesn't matter what color you are or what race you are, there is a cause you can come behind that can destroy you because it sounds good and it tickles your ear and it makes you feel good about yourself, prideful, and it's not a part of our kingdom. There's a piece of it that sounds like a part of our kingdom, but then it goes too far. That's You're going to be judged for that. Then there's that other side where because you've been privileged and you thought because you were privileged, you were like the Jewish people, God loved you more. I'm speaking to somebody. And so now you've had some pestilence to sit you down. You're ignoring the pestilence. You're ignoring the fact that you're being rude. You're taking on the uh, language that oppresses even more. The lies, the gaslighting to keep this lie going of racism and oppression. Justifying it by saying you're Christian. That's blasphemy. Put your tail between your legs, white person or person that is in privilege whoever it is, whatever color you are, if you are from another country, whatever, be careful because you don't want me to be a stumbling block or a black person to be a stumbling block to you. You think you're winning when you say these things loudly because you're the leader that you follow is loud. But God doesn't even like that leader and that leader's coming down and you're going down with them. I'm so sorry. The only person that we're supposed to be following is a God and that's Jesus. That's it. No human being. White, black, Republican, Democrat, I don't care. 
These are end times. And if that person you're following is not filled with the Holy Spirit, they're probably leading you to damnation. I don't care if they're black or white. They're leading you to hell if they do not have a center of God in them. This is a warning. This is a warning. We are in the end times and things are happening fast. Put your tail between your legs, change your voice, your words, change your ways. And if you're a Christian, you're going to get it doubly. You're going to get judgment doubly because you use Christianity to turn people away from Christ because you're ugly. You're being ugly with what you're saying. You're regurgitating words, you're using your evangelical spirit for this darkness of racism, or you're falling behind these causes that have a little bit of what God likes, which is against oppression. And you're adding all that other stuff that he doesn't like. And you're saying it in the name of Jesus, you will get it 10 times more than somebody who doesn't. Woe unto you. Woe unto you. If you play these games of lies of these last days and think you're getting away with it because you just press send and no one can see you because you're with a lot of people that are really loud. Don't let me be a stumbling block to you. Don't let someone like me be a stumbling block to you. Woe unto you. Amen. That's the message that I'm hearing. Be careful. Be careful. Because I'm sorry, your leader can't take your life or give you life. Your leader can just be a chingling loud noise and look big and puffed up. But you're going to turn around one day and they'll be gone. And all it's going to be is you standing with the God before you. What will he say when your leader's gone? When your leader is not leading anymore because they're not able to for whatever reason. They're human just like you and me. Woe unto you if you follow a great cause and you follow 100% what this human being is saying. A human being will have a percentage that is dark and lead you to hell. These are deceptive in times. The only time you should follow a leader on this earth is when Jesus takes over this earth and he sets up his kingdom in the millennium. That's the only time you follow a human being on this earth. And he won't be a human being. He'll be Jesus. He's the only perfect leader. There is no perfect leader. Even Martin Luther King, he was, I think he's one of the best leaders that we ever had. And he wasn't perfect. But you notice we don't talk about him anymore. Why? Because he had God at the center. No one wants God anymore. They don't want Jesus anymore. When I grew up, we talked about Martin Luther King all the time. But there's an absence of love of Christ right now. Be careful who you follow. Be careful what you regurgitate with your own mouth. Because he only has a spotlight on you. You could be at a rally. You know what I'm saying? And you're riled up. You think you're good because you got your peeps around you. But God only sees you screaming. He only sees you saying those awful things by yourself. And you will be judged for it by yourself when you meet him. Today is the day of salvation. Choose today who you will serve. Be careful what you say and do because you will be judged. And the judgment I'm seeing around me, people are crying in hospitals, unable to breathe. People are having fires. People are having stuff. You don't see the judgment. Only God knows if it's judgment or if it's pruning. Trust me, you want to be pruned, not judged. The only way you and I will know is by knowing what, how we live our lives. If we live our lives for Christ at the center, we can get on that throne. We can go before him and we can be honest. And we know if we're going through, that's pruning. But if we're going through, we haven't, and we're not saved, you can be and would probably be destroyed. It's judgment. I don't care how white you are or how black you are, how masculine or feminine you are. You got to do what I'm doing anyway. So you might as well come on over here and do it because if you don't, you're going to hell and you're going to start the hell here on this earth. On this earth, you're going to start feeling it. What do you think this depression, anxiety, that's a living hell. You can have joy. You can have joy. If God allows you to keep some of that in there, that depression, anxiety, a thorn on your side, that's between you and him. He has a reason for that. But it is possible to be completely healed. It is possible full to be completely healed. I talk about it in my book. It's possible, y'all. So I need you to awaken your mind and stop just letting yourself just believe all the nonsense that's out there. Get closer to the word. Get on your knees. Stop. 
If you're the only one in your area doing it, you're the remnant. That's okay. That's what this book is all about. That's what Isaiah is talking about. Okay. So if I had to give that message to somebody, even before I got started, it just was heavy on my heart. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the movement. And then I'm going to read the scripture and we can end it there. Unless the Holy Spirit has more he wants me to say. <laughs> yes, I'm going to do some movement now. She says, belly dancing now. <laughs> okay. We're going to do a little bit. Okay. And Desi, are you going to get up and dance with me? We do about one minute of it. You're going to get up. Only if you get up, you're going to get up and dance with me. Say yes. Or put a dancing emoji. All right. This is for you, Adresse Harris. <laughs> all right, y'all. Let's get up and get some movement on. Um, if you got to go, if you're not a dancer and you're not a movement person, come on back in about a minute. And we'll be ready to read that scripture, see what God's going to say about it. But that message was so important. It was for you. Okay, so let me get my sash. This is what I wore today to church. <laughs> yep, and here's my sash. Anybody just coming in, don't forget to check out my book, Resilient Joy. It's about my story. You want to know how I got so deep in the Lord and so joyful at the same time. It's very rare. As the evangelist that I am, I am considered a Hayoka empath that is uh, the highest and the most powerful empath that there is. And I'm like, wow, that makes sense. And I get why I'm the way I am. <laughs> so, and I do things that are different and opposite. So we're going to do some belly dancing. And then we're going to get into the scripture. Y'all ready? I want to do smooth today, okay? Are you dancing with me, Adresse? Come on now. You can't just say that and then walk away. You got to stay with us. Okay. I'm led to go slow today, okay? Slide. 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 You see that? That's what I'm doing. Slide. This is what it looks like. Slide. We're gonna do a figure eight. We're gonna twist, twist, twist. Okay, now watch what I do. We're gonna go twist, slide, twist, slide. Now look at my knees. I'm bent a little bit. I'm bent. And I'm like going like this with my knees. Okay? Slide, slide. Slide, look at that. Slide, there you go. Slide. Use your hands to push. I'm gonna go low with it. Can you bend and go with it low? Okay, come on up now. Let's go the other way. Back, forward, back, forward. I'm gonna bow now. Forward, back, down. Thank you, Lord. I give you all of myself. Go the other way. Back. Can we go back? I don't know if that's too much for you. Forward. Forward. I bow down to you. Now we're going to go back forward. Back, forward, back. We give everything to you, Lord. We love you. How was that? Can you go side to side? We're going to go down with it. Love you, Lord. I give you all of myself. We love you, Lord. Beautiful. Beautiful. Address A. You came in just in time. Sometimes you come in after I dance and then you ask me to dance. <laughs> so you came in just in time. All righty. We're going to be getting more of the belly dance later in our next thing. We have some big things coming up and we'll have it more in that. So we'll be talking more about that. All right. So thank you so much for letting me get that out. That was great. We always have movement and message. We got a little movement going on there. Let me read this chapter. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I don't think it's going to be that long. It's just chapter 24 in Isaiah, y'all. I'm going to read from this one, the study Bible, the HCSB study Bible. Let's see how that relates, how what the message before this relates to the actual chapter. I just want to see how it relates. And I wanted this one because I want to read the commentary because it talks a lot about the uh, future. It talks about 
end times and all that stuff. So let's read. We are in Isaiah chapter 24. The earth judge. And I want to come back. I'm going to keep on praying about talking about Ethiopia and all that. The black uh, uh, countries, uh, people that came to the one and true living God. I want to talk more about that as the Lord leads me. But I'm going to keep praying about how God wants me to share that if he even does. I just thought it was intriguing for me. So if he doesn't want me to share any more about it to you, then I guess I won't. But I'll pray about if God does. And we can talk a little more about it because the black community does want to know where we fit in. And so I want to at least give us peace in that area, okay, so that we understand where that is. And there are Black Jewish people right now that are looking for, um, let me see something. Let me see if I have the name of this company. I might give you their name now. Yeah, Jewish Voice. I want you to look up Jewish Voice. They send money to and support um, the tribes, those lost tribes that are Ethiopian and they need support to feed them. It's called Jewish Voice Ministries. Okay, so um, let me just show you what it looks like. This is the company right here. All right, so just know about that they're out there and they actually know that there are uh, the lost tribes and there are people that are black Jewish people and they're not being accepted and that they're, they're hungry and they're needing to be, um, supported and God know because they're his chosen if you bless them you're you're blessed you know if you just like it is for us today don't let me be a stumbling block to you or any Christian because if you hurt a Christian if you try to harm us or disrespect us to do anything that the Bible says it's better if you weren't born it says some some stuff you know and I, I hate to repeat that but I do want to make sure you're wise in these end times the, the things that are said in the Bible are real it doesn't matter what's going on out there I don't care what's going on out there God will be the last say no matter what, which side do you want to be on? He's bigger than anything you're seeing out there. So be careful falling for any of these things. I don't care how smart they are or how established they seem. It isn't worth it. Okay. So always stay grounded in the truth from the Lord and obey him above all. Amen. Okay. Let's see what happens when you don't. Let's go into chapter 24. The earth judged is what it's called this chapter in this book. Look, the Lord is stripping the earth bare and making it desolate. He will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. People and priests alike, servant and master, female servant and mis mistress, buyer and seller, lender and borrower, creditor and debtor. The earth will be stripped completely bare and will be totally plundered for the Lord has spoken this message. The earth mourns and withers, the world wastes away and withers. The, the exalted people of the earth waste away. The earth is polluted by its inhabitants, for they have transgressed teachings, overstepped decrees, and broken the everlasting covenant. I have that underlined. This is the end time stuff I'm talking about, y'all. Therefore, a curse has consumed the earth, and its inhabitants have become guilty. The earth's inhabitants have been burned, and only a few survive. A new wine burns. The vine withers, all the car carousers now grown. Okay, think about it. all this fun. This is what we're doing right now. Be careful. The joyful tambourines have ceased. The noise of the jubilant has stopped. The joyful lair has ceased. They no longer sing and drink wine. Beer is bitter to those who drink it. The city of chaos is scattered. Every house is closed to entry. In the streets, they cry for wine. All joy grows dark. Earth's rejoicing goes into exile. Only desolation remains in the city and its gate has collapsed in ruins. For this is how it will be on earth among the nations. Like a harvest olive tree, like a gleaning after a grape's harvest. They raise their voices, they sing out, they proclaim in the West the majesty of the Lord. Let me go back a little bit here. 12, only desolation remains in the city. A gate has collapsed in ruin. 413, for this is how it will be on earth among the nations, like a harvested olive tree, like a gleaning after a grape harvest. So it's like everything's taken out. So God is coming right now to separate the wheat from the tear, and he's, it's a harvest now. So when we're raptured up, it's going to be a mess here. And then tribulation. And after tribulation is over, God has done the harvesting. There's nothing left. It'll be desolate. I believe that's where we are right now. 
Um, if I read here, I will read the commentators, but I want to you to know that I believe this is after the tribulation, after God has done his work. They raise their voices, they sing out, they proclaim in the West the majesty of the Lord. Therefore, in the East, honor the Lord. In the island of the West, honor the name of Yahweh, the God is of Israel. From the ends of the earth, we hear songs, the splendor of the righteous one. We switch over here after 14. That's why I want to read it over. Because now that it's laid, nothing can happen. No one, nothing's going on. Now what's happened? There's a shift. Now the whole world sees that God is Lord and he's everything. What I was trying to tell you before we read this is that's the case now. Right now, Yahweh is everything and he is everything. And he is the only way, the truth and the light. And his word is bond and he can, can do anything and he can destroy if he wants to and he can judge. And I don't know why people are scared to hear but talk about hell. I mean, please, with the movies we've been watching these days, what are we afraid of? We are afraid to tell people they're going to go to hell after we watch these. I have never seen this show, but there's a show lately. It's called Gain Something, Squid or something. Y'all can watch that, but I can't say that you're going to go to hell. Come on, people, please. We're in the end times, and yes, you are. So if you can watch all this horrible stuff out there, then your heart and mind can handle the fact that if you continue to live a life or anyone around you live a life that's against the Lord, that's what happens. You go to hell, and it doesn't end. It doesn't end. It's a, a false prophecy. It goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, okay? So your worst day, the worst feeling you've ever had in your life, times 10 forever. You don't get respite. There is no medicine. There is no water. There is nothing. So it's serious. That's why nobody wants to tell you because they don't want you to be afraid of it so that you don't do the wrong things to get there. It's time to bring it back. And I don't want to hear it. Everybody's so soft to hear about the truth, but y'all love this stuff out here that I can't even watch. So you know what? It's, it's just pride. It's pride. You want what you want, but you don't want to hear the truth, what God's saying. God's saying, you're going to have that. I don't want you to have that, so obey me. You're saying, oh, why are you going to talk about that heavy stuff? Well, why are you watching these TV shows that are so heavy? It ain't that it's the heavy stuff you don't want to hear. You don't want to hear the truth about what's going to happen to you for doing the wrong thing. That's what's really going on. So don't play, because I know. Shoot. I used to teach, the, I used to teach these kids. And I said, S. H-O-O-T, by the way. I don't curse. <laughs> God's grace. But anyway, um, anyway, yeah. So I know these the young people, they like to act soft when it's go time for them to be judged. And not just the young people, just people. But then they don't mind having hard stuff when they want it. But when it's time to really look into who they are and how they should change who they are, they don't want it. It's too, it's too hard on them. But yet their minds and, and souls can handle way more than I can when they're watching, playing these video games and watching these movies and stuff. So it's not that it's too much. It's that they don't want to be seen. They don't want the truth about themselves to be seen. They don't want to look at themselves for truth. And they don't want to decide today who you will serve. So same thing here. We're no different from them here because that's exactly how they were here. They didn't want to hear it, Isaiah talk. They didn't want to hear the prophecies. They didn't want to hear any of this stuff. They wanted pridefully to do what they wanted to do. They didn't want to bow down to the living God. So. What, what we're hearing after chapter 14, I mean, verse 14, is that finally, when the world washed away with only a little bit left, God is now praised. They raise their voices, verse 14. They sing out, they proclaim in the West, the majesty of the Lord. Now they're doing it. Therefore, did Jesus change? Did God change? No. God didn't change. It's just revealed because everything got shut down. Like last year. Who's in charge? But even with last year, obviously people are still hard-headed and they're not listening because of pride, because of uh, uh, exceptionalism, because of privilege. It can't be God. It's got to be something else. So that means, guess what God's going to have to do? Another one, something else. We may be raptured out when that happens. That might be the tribulation. But can you see how human beings can switch things in their heads and we never learn till it's all over? That's why we have to have tribulation. I get it now, how hard-headed we can be. Y'all know that word. So, okay, verse 15. Therefore, in the east, honor the Lord. In the island of the west, honor the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel. From the ends of the earth, we hear song, the splinter of the righteous one. But I said, I waste away. I waste away. Woe in me. The treacheries are um, act treacherously. 
The treacherous act treacherously. The treacherous deal very treacherously. 17, panic pit and trap wait you who dwell on the earth. Did you hear that? Panic pit and trap await you who dwell on the earth. Be careful. Let me read that commentary just to see what they're saying. The words panic pit and trap patched wapachat wapach play on the similarly similarity of sounds of these three words in Hebrew. They stand for the judgment that God has prepared for the sinful inhabitants of the earth. The open window of the sky, empty rain and suggests devastating flood. The shaking foundation would be experienced as earthquake. This is tribulation, y'all, because uh, it goes on to that earthquake. Stuff. So uh, that's 18, 17 and 18. So 18 is whoever flees at the sounds of panic. And okay, let me go back to 17 because it goes with 18. It sounds better. It's like poetic. Panic, pit, and trap await you who dwell on the earth. Whoever flees at the sound of panic will fall into a pit. Who And whoever escapes from the pit will be caught in a trap. You can't escape this. For the windows are open from heaven. And the foundations of the earth are shaken. So the only way out is heaven. So I don't. this is the stuff before this happens. Do you realize this hasn't happened yet? We got all these lies out there of truth of what we are as black people, of what you are, what we are as women, what, what everything is. Gaslighting lies everywhere. God, is, I, I, by, God revealed so much in 2020. He revealed what that word is. He revealed um, the difference between a narcissism and an and a empath. He revealed it in my play. Is the begin uh, That's interesting how God had me do the play when he, when he did in October of last year and then the election and then all the eyes were open. I can't imagine that my play has them do it because I know there were a lot of people talking about it. There were a lot of psychologists talking about it, but God just revealed all that. And now we all know what a narcissist is. We've heard of it anyway. We've heard of gaslighting. We've heard of, of impasse. We've heard of all this stuff now. We may not know what it means, but it's unveiled. And now we know right from wrong even more. But what God is showing me is that it doesn't matter what's in here. It never got here. It doesn't matter if you know what that word means. If you don't, your, your heart isn't broken that it happens. The longest distance is from the head to the heart. My father taught me from being an AA. They know that. The Israelites, they know a lot. But what's here? Obviously, they don't love God. Many of them don't love God because they're not listening. The world, these people say, I can't stand this and I can't stand this and I don't want to do this and I like this guy for president and I want this, I want that, and I'm a Christian. No, you're not. I'm sorry. They will know you by your love. You're not. In fact, you're going to be judged way worse, I'm repeating it, than somebody who doesn't say they're Christian and is racist and is horrible and is oppressive or supports it or says those words. You're going to be judged more. It's sad how God is making those people think that they are actually more privileged in God's eyes when in actuality, they're going to be judged 10 times more because God actually does love black people. God does love women. God does love disabled. God does love the underdog. He said, blessed are the meek. God does love the nice white guy that no one talks about. The Lincolns, they're still here. Nobody hears them because they're quiet while the narcissists are nasty. God loves that white person that's been there, been an ally, quiet ally, who's never done any of these things, whose heart breaks every time they hear something bad said and, and cried out for George Floyd. The, there are a lot of people like that that no one wants to talk about. We found out that the biggest platform was actually hiding all that and, a, and pushing up all the negative and being a part of the incitement, inciting darkness of the world. Y'all look it up. There's a lawsuit out against that platform right now. And the spirit, I've always stayed away from that platform because I never, notice I'm not doing my ministry on that platform, but I'm doing it here. A lot of people are doing ministries on that platform. I it wasn't feeling right with my spirit to do so. And now they're actually in trouble. They're about to change their name. You know what I'm talking about. So that means there are a lot of very good white people that actually, they're my, I know a lot. I had a best friend. She's, she was heartbroken. I have so many friends, Hispanic girl, just heartbroken, a white girl, lots of people, heartbroken and just so upset 
calling me saying, Patrice, what can I do? Uh, you know, going to rallies, my husband, sometimes I wonder if he's loved Martin Luther King more than me. Lincoln, he's the reason why we stopped slavery. White man that suffered for black people. No one wants to talk about that because we like saying that every black, white person is mean. That's not true. I think our president right now is empathetic. I think he cares. I think, you know, anybody who follows that cares. There's so many empathetic people that are not getting any, getting the mic because all the narcissistic people have been having the mic. And they're white. And there are black people that like white people, white people that like black people. Nobody wants that conversation out because the devil's ruling. He's got his people on the mic. And all that's going to do is incite more, isn't it? What a demonic thing. Be wise. Be wise. Because there are people being wise and they're gonna be raptured up and you're gonna be left behind if you're not wise. And even if you do go to heaven because you're saved, if you haven't been building your treasures in heaven and using your life as a blessing, white, black, doesn't matter, Hispanic, doesn't matter, Asian, Indian, doesn't matter, Middle Eastern, you're not getting treasures when you get there. There are levels in heaven. Yeah, she says, yes, I know a lot of good white people. I know. And a lot of black people don't want to say that out loud. I'm using my platform. My husband's one of them. Sometimes I feel bad because he'll say something and notice something so, so like he's upset about it before I do sometimes. Sometimes they get more upset about things than us because they can see more. They're around more and they have a clearer perspective. So they get more angry than we do sometimes. Fair-skinned black people can also. I feel like they're getting a bad rap lately. All of a sudden, everybody's so hard on fair skin. Do you know they paved the way? There are some white people and fair skinned black people that were way more fight the power because they were allowed in places where darker people weren't in the past. And they were the ones that had Frederick Douglass mixed. He was, we needed him in order for us to get somewhere. Underground Railroad, there were white people on top that were lying to let us get by. Come on, girl, guys. America does have good people. Did you see Selma? There were white people dying on, out there with the black people. The devil's such a liar. In our kingdom, it doesn't matter what color you are. And there are truly good Christian people that do not see that out there, truly do live and right. Uh, she's saying, she just shared that her husband had a hard time with white people growing up. She had to show him that there are good white people out there and let, and so that he can know that it even exists. We, that's our job, Catherine. We have to because it's it's getting the devil wants us to just hate each other. Yeah, you know, when I grew up, you'll see in my book, you know, the, I grew up around Hispanic people, and there were some really mean, racist ones. But most of my experience was good. So I'm going to grow up and think everyone is like that. So we've got to have these conversations on our platforms. We've got to show pictures. We got to share with people. Stop this nonsense of being so ang angry, that's, you're feeding into the devil's lie. You're doing his work when you keep separation. Remember, God has no respect of persons at all. His chosen are the Christians right now. So we're gonna have a blessing. All things do work together for us. That's the difference, but it's only because we allowed him and we let him, we said, yes, we'll take you. Not because we're better, it's because we said yes and the others haven't said yes yet to him dying on the cross. That's the only difference. No one's better than anybody. God, it doesn't matter. I don't care how pretty you are. People have privilege. My whole thing on pretty privilege or privilege or any kind of privilege, even, even the Israelites and even Christians, is that, but meaning if you have something going for you because society likes you better because you look a certain way or you, you, you were born with something different, everyone has a privilege of some sort. Everyone. If you really look at your life, you have something I don't have. I have something you don't have. And it, it's exactly what God wanted to give you so that you can get through this world. Even some people who have disabilities, it can be a privilege in certain circles because you get away with certain things that others can't. So even though that seems like it's not a privilege, it will put you in a position where others might treat you better. I had an admin problem once and I had to be in a wheelchair and we went to in the aqua, the aquatics, a place, a, you know, the, um, can't remember the name of it right now in, um, Georgia. And I, from the perspective of that wheelchair, I was like a queen. It was weird. 
it was just a weird perspective being a black woman that's used to having to kind of like deal with either this crowd might not like me because I'm black, this might like me because I am. And I never know what to get sometimes. But when I was in that chair, I mean, people were so, I mean, I was like, oh gosh, I could actually get, cons I could really, this is not going to be good for me if I, <laughs> because life is just like, it's like they, they, they do so much for you. People do so much for you. And so, yes, you are not privileged in some ways, but God gave you a, a privilege in a different way to make up for it is what I'm trying to say. So don't sit there and, and measure your weakness with somebody's strength is what Mary Kay always taught me. Because if you sit there saying, well, she's got this and she's got that. So life is easier for her. Well, if you talk, I haven't, I've been led to talk about beauty privilege, but I'm going to be honest. Some privileges that you think are privileges are blessings and curses at the same time, because you get a lot of jealousy. You get a lot of pain. You get a lot of actually doors closed because people are intimidated thinking you're going to do something when you're not. I mean, you might think it's privilege, but you may not want to give up what you're able to do based on what they can't do because of their privilege. Because in your circle, it would, it would be actually be you'd have to do some, you have to give up some things to have those things. Like there's some things I can't do that others can do and no one even flinches. And sometimes it's, I couldn't even get auditions because I didn't, I didn't look uh, everyday-ish enough. I was too pretty. I looked too moder model -y. So sometimes, you know, it's a blessing and a curse. Everybody has a privilege of some sort. God gave everybody something for whatever their ministry was going to be or whatever they were going to need to do for their calling. So maybe the beauty was needed for my calling where yours was more something different. And if you had what I had, you wouldn't have the things you have anymore. It would take, you'd have to give up some of those things because the people wouldn't respond to you the same. So you have to understand God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing and everyone has a privilege and no one's better than anyone else. God has no respect of persons because of that. You know, and when you're saved, he sees his son in you anyway. Because you can't do anything to be good. There's nothing good about me or you. It's because we are letting go of that, that we let Holy Spirit just completely live in us. That's the only thing that's good about us. Amen, y'all? Go back and watch that part, the parts of this video that can encourage you about not being racist or sexist or any of that. Have a heart of God. In our kingdom, we don't have that. Start now. And this truth that we're reading about is now, is even when the earth is, is looking good like now, God still is the Yahweh. Y'all got to know that. He's still the Yahweh, even before this happens. But it's sad that God has to do this for them to see that he's the Yahweh. And that no one, there's no respecter of persons. Only those who let Yah, got Jesus in their heart um, it, are the ones that will be special in God's eyes. And live for the Lord. And have a heart of Christ. Those are the ones that are special in God's eyes. No matter what you look like. Or what you've accomplished. Because this whole world's going to be gone anyway. You can't take it with you. So what will be left? Come on, let's use wisdom. What matters then? If the world leaves and it's over, what's going to still be here that matters is what you should be focusing on. Her dad taught her to love everyone. And I remember you said that. I remind you of him. Yes, he had a, that's a God heart. That's a God heart. I'm sorry. When you look past that, you don't let anything be a stumbling block. That means you're not going to let anybody, a white person could be a stumbling block to a black person who is um, looking at thinking every white person is like that. So that means if God sent a wonderful friend to you and you're praying for it, or a man, you're praying for it, but you can't be with a white guy, you can't have a white friend, that's a stumbling block for you. You're going to be hurt because you did not allow yourself to be loved or helped or have that friendship. That's a stumbling block is what I'm talking about. Don't buy into the hype, white to black. You, I saw a white woman in the pool that I prayed with the other day. And I could tell in her speech that there was some stuff in there that didn't sound too right, but that yet she wanted the love that I was in. You know, so I think the enemy didn't win. If she had something in there from the propaganda out there about this political nonsense that's dividing us and making a racist talk, she got confused by the love. She was like, wait, when I just pray with this woman, I don't feel that. So choose today. She's going to have to choose. We were the same in God's eyes. We were speaking God's language. We were being godly together. And all that other nonsense didn't matter. Because it doesn't matter. Because it's going to go away. It's a lie of the devil. Anything that's going to be away when Jesus takes over is a lie. Don't bank on that. If you had millions of dollars, would you put your money on something that you know is going to die or something that's going to live forever? 
Come on now, where do your treasures lie is what that means. That's what that means when he says, where does your treasures lie? You want everlasting. You want to do things that are everlasting. That's why if you share the gospel, that's everlasting. That person will be in heaven forever. You'll see them. They'll be thanking you in heaven. Whatever you put in your children and your relationships, it should be everlasting. Help them grow. Help them be better. Help people be everlasting stuff. Joy. That's where you want to put your money, your time, your energy. Don't do this petty nonsense. All this cancer culture nonsense. All this, that stuff is going to be gone in another year. That's where you're going to put all your treasures. You're going to bank all your savings in that, in a trend. Or you're going to find where you're going to say, wait, Yahweh is here now. We're just not paying attention to him. It, I'm going to be weird, but I think Yahweh still is number one. It says here, they're going to say, honor the name of Yahweh. Well, you need to be doing it now and not waiting for the devastation. Because guess what? We should, Yah, the name of Yahweh is honored now. Right now, wisdom is knowing the truth even when it's covered up. Pray for wisdom. Don't let it be a stumbling block. Pray for wisdom. You're hearing the truth. You know it now. Now you have a responsibility. Okay? So 19, the earth is completely devastated. The earth is split open. The earth is violently. This is a prophet, prophet the major of major prophets. That means he's not just talking. This is going to happen. And in tribulation, it's there. This is happening. We are in that time, y'all, right before. The earth is completely devastated. The earth is split open. The earth is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunkard and sways like a hunt. Earth's rebellion weighs it down and it falls never to rise again, never to rise again. So are you going to put your energy in this earth or what? Let's see what stays though. On that day, hallelujah. Y'all be careful when you hear on that day. Okay. On that day, the Lord will punish the host of heavens above and the kings of earth below. So all of the evil in the in uh, of this earth spiritually and the kings the ones you're following these people that are in politics those are the kings of this earth be careful because he's going to punish them and you going down with them be careful on that day the lord will punish the host of heavens above the kings of the earth below 22 they will be gathered together like prisoners in a pit they will be confined to a dragon. After many days, they will be punished. 23, the moon will be put to shame and the sun degraced. Because the Lord of hosts will reign as king. Finally, we're going to have the perfect, perfect leader. We have not one right now. So whoever you're following, there's a percentage of that what they're saying that is not right. I promise you. I promise you. Unless they're completely following Jesus and they're talking about Jesus the whole time. If they're talking about anything outside of Jesus, there's a percentage that's wrong because there's only one perfect leader if you're looking for one. So be careful following politics because there's going to be a percentage that's wrong that they're talking about. Okay, everyone, every human being, unless you're just talking about Jesus. As soon as you get off talking about Jesus and you got your own opinion, there's a percentage that's going to be wrong. Okay, that, got, that, that could be wrong. If you're not led by the Holy Spirit and what you're saying, you're probably wrong about some of it. So you're going to take all of it because you feel like they're such a great person, right? Well, there could be a 2% that ain't right. If they're not following the Holy Spirit. Be careful. Stay before the Lord. Let it be centered around Jesus, what you're saying, what you're doing. Who you're following should be centered around Jesus, what they're saying and what they're doing. Spirit-led. And for me, I usually give you a preface when I say, well, this is something I'm feeling. So that you know the difference. So I know the difference. When the Spirit's speaking... When I feel that the spirit speaking and when I feel like, okay, that's more of what I'm thinking, you know, and after a while it gets, it becomes who you are. So it's kind of hard to tell the difference because you kind of, it, he's always in you. You're always thinking you, you will live your life for the Holy spirit. So it's really hard sometimes. So usually what you're saying is spirit led when you're in the spirit, but there are times when I can tell when it's just kind of what I'm feeling for the moment, you know? Okay. Um, okay. So because the Lord of hosts will reign as King, hallelujah, on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, and he will display his holy, his glory rather in the presence of his elders. Oh, wow. And I believe the elders is, that's going to be us. We're the elders because I want to read revelation because God let me to do that first. The 12 um, elders representing the uh, 12 tribes, I believe, 
or the I can't remember exactly how it's being said, but they're on the throne. And as soon as um as soon as John sees heaven, they are already there. And I believe that's the rapture. First, Jesus talks about the churches. That's why he wants me to talk about the churches. There is a problem with the churches. And um, then he goes straight to heaven and he sees the elders. And I believe that's us. We are the ones that are raptured. Okay. Um, th that's chapter 24. I really want to keep going. Salvation and judgment on the last day, on that day. But the Lord told me just to do 24 and we're up. We have our time. I want to talk about the one the, on that day one more time, but, and then we'll stop. So Verse 21, the phrase on that day points to a future but unspecified time. God's judgment is extensive. It not only covers the earth, but also the host of heaven. A phrase that either indicates the stars, perhaps also uh, suggested pagan deities or fallen angels. And I believe that. I believe it's something spiritual he's talking about. There are dark spirits and he's saying they're going to be destroyed and also the kings of this earth, because that's the Babylonian kingdom is of this earth. God chooses who he's going to be and king, be king, good or bad, but it's all going to be part of the story to lead up to what he's already um, professed that will happen. So the Bible must be fulfilled. We have not gone through tribulation yet. And God does allows for the kings that are there to ramp up to that. God must judge. God must send people, the devil and his angels and those who have followed the devil into the lake of fire. He must do that. This must happen. So we get to choose as long as we have air, have um, breathing air and as long as we have air in this body. So as long as you're alive in this body, you have not chosen until you've chosen. Amen. And so the moment you ask Jesus in your heart to be a Lord and Savior, now you're not going to go to hell. We're all destined to hell by birth because of Adam and Eve falling. And now God has presented us with a way out. And it is to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. He paid the price. The devil took the deed and Jesus paid that deed with his life. And all you have to do is say, yes, thank you for dying for me, Jesus. I believe you're the God of this universe. I believe that you died on the cross for me. Come in my heart so I can choose to be living forever with you in heaven. When this whole world is destroyed, I want to be up with you. I want to be everlasting with you living forever in this kingdom. And I promise I will live like I'm in that kingdom on this earth until then, because I am already destined to be there. So I have to live my life like I'm there here as an example to bring more people. That's my life. That's my goal. That's everlasting lifestyle. And those people who refuse that, but are so mesmerized by this world that looks like it's so great, but it's going to go, they're going to go where their God goes. The, the prince of this air, he's still the prince of this air. God has, Jesus has overcome the world. So you can come to him and he'll keep things from you so that you can still be here as long as he wants you to do. And you, he, the devil can't touch you. Hallelujah. So long as you are covered and you stay before the Lord and you stay in the kingdom, and you live the kingdom way, you won't be touched. It's all over the Bible. And if he does, God will turn it to your good. That's what it is to live with the Lord. But everyone else, he's going to lie and make it look like you're doing fine. He's going to lie and make it look like you're winning. He's going to lie and say, yes, oh, this world's going to this, this world's going to be here forever. Go ahead and destroy your treasures in your bank. Don't care about anything but what's here, your body here, your whatever's here. Step on people. That's the Babylonian kingdom. But as we just saw, God's in control of that kingdom. But the devil's lying. And these people, they don't want to do the right things. They want to keep on living like that. That's going to die one day. And these people will still be going to glory and glory and glory. Which side do you want to be on? Choose today who you will serve. If you choose this world, you will get the good things of this world for a season. But these are the people that are going to be crushed. And these people, guess what they have to do at the end? Praise the same God you do because he is their God too. So why waste your time in these lies, this deception? Why not do it now? You'll get more rewards when you do it, when it's harder to do it now, when you can't see clearly. You have to see by your spirit. That, that's the bride. The raptured bride, we did it in faith when it was not popular to do it. When you didn't get a lot of likes, that's the bride. Once he reveals himself when we are raptured up and everybody knows about it, it's easy to follow Jesus then. So those are the tribulation saints. They're not the bride, but sure, God's such a living, loving God, he's going to let them up too. And then there's still stubborn people still here. 
you know, and then they're just going to have to go through it. So there's a lot that goes on with tribulation that I could talk about later, but I want you to understand in times tribulation, that's where we are. That's probably where God has me doing this. And um, we are right at the end, just before the rapture. Right now we are there living it. People's hearts have been waxed cold. That means the church. We don't love each other like we should, the church. The church wasn't do, caring about the dying people in the pandemic last year. They just wanted to know if you were coming back to church. The church has fallen. Very rare do you see a good church that truly has Jesus at the center sharing the gospel and doesn't care about black, white, and stuff. Very rare now. Very special if you find that. And I pray you do. And that's why God has people like me over here because it's hard to find that now. People who are not trying to just get your money and lie to you and have false prophecy and have you uh, voting for certain people and all the nonsense that will be gone and washed away. Not even worth it to be a part of. Jesus loves you. He needs you to know that now. The time is drawing nigh. The time is drawing nigh. He needs you to know it now. He needs you to come to him now. Today is the day of salvation. That's the message God has for you, okay? That's your message. So if you are ready to come to Christ and you want me to lead you in that prayer, please repeat after me and only if it's truly in your heart. Only God knows. Okay, so repeat after me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I turn from my ways. And I'm ready to go your way. I'm ready to make that choice today to live with you forever, Lord. I repent of all the sins that I inherited from Adam and Eve. And those sins I did myself. Forgive me, Jesus. I believe you are who you say you are, Jesus. God coming down in the flesh. I believe you died on the cross just for me. And you pay the price. I believe you unlocked the gates to hell and overcame this world. And I believe you rose the third day and you're alive today in heaven on the right hand side of God the Father. Come in my heart and be my Lord and my Savior, Jesus. So I can live with you forever in heaven when I die. And so I can use my life today to live like you and bring more to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you truly said that prayer from the bottom of your heart, you're what they're called born again. You have made that choice. You're going to heaven no matter what happens to you after this when you die. The only thing that's left now is to live for Christ and live like Christ in all that you do. So get your Bible, go into the book of John and begin to learn who you are now in this new baby. You are a baby Christian drinking milk. Build, build, build until you're eating meat so you can do more of things like me and share with people around you. And it doesn't matter what's going on. Just stay focused until he comes. Don't worry what you see with your eyes. Let your spirit guide you because the truth is what we're saying here. He reigns no matter what anybody says. The truth is, is that our kingdom is the right way. Amen. So stay with me on, on Sundays at two as the Lord leads me and we can keep on going through this. I love you. God bless you. My co-host is back and she's saying J-O-Y. Jesus overcame for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so and God bless you. And don't let anyone take your joy away. It is heavenly. It's not of this world. Let it stay in you. Let it glow. Have fun. But don't go outside of the lines of what we do in the kingdom. Amen. We do dance. We have a great time. It's where your heart is. Even my father told me that, where's your heart when you're dancing? Where's your heart when you're singing? Is it with the Lord or is it with the world? God knows that. Amen. So I love you. You can email me if you have any questions. Stay tuned. I'm putting together a, I think it's going to be a book launch party so that we can be talking about some of these things of what the next step is for our ministry and what we're doing. Um, and I love you so much. As an evangelist, I just want you, you could take that part of the video, share it with somebody. If you don't know how to share the gospel, let them see the whole video. It's in all of my videos. So I want you to be able to help others come to you. And I'm so glad, Catherine, you were able to stay. Oh, I love you too. I love you. Love you all very much. Catherine, I know read my book and she still loves me. So that's good news. <laughs> she knows all my secrets. I was wondering, I was like, oh, snap. She's going to know everything. I hope she's still my friend. <laughs> 
Oh, she's still my friend after finding out all my business. <laughs> anyway, I love you. Mm, I love you all so very much. God bless you. Have a great week. Ah, uh, you still my friend. Yay, she's still my friend. <laughs> all right, I love you. You have a wonderful, wonderful week. I'm going to be in touch with you and I'll let you know what we're doing next in our ministry. Okay, I love you guys. Thank you for staying. I know not everybody spoke, but I see you up here. I see you still here. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye, Catherine. <laughs>